Good morning. Thank you for joining us online today. There's a couple things we would love for you to do as our service gets started. Uh, in the chat feature of your uh, service, you should see a link to both the Connect card and the digital bulletin. If you could click on those, fill out the Connect card, check out the bulletin, that would be awesome. We would also love for you to share the service with the people in your life, whether that's right now on Facebook, you can click the share button, or if you're on live stream, after the fact, you can email it out or something like that. Uh, we would just love to continue to reach more and more people through this increasingly difficult time. As we go into worship this morning, would you pray with me? God, we are so thankful that we can still gather in some capacity. Um, it's, it's different than it was last week. It, it feels similar to what we were going through a couple of months ago. And um, with the holidays coming, it's, it's sad. I, I think a lot of us are probably experiencing loss as we maybe don't get to have Thanksgiving the way that we had hoped, or we're, we're not going to have Christmas potentially the way that we hoped. And God, we just pray that in this, in this time, we would be able to set that aside and just meet with you. 
God, through the songs that we sing, the prayers that we pray, the, the message that Robin's gonna share, that God, we would just, um, we would just connect to you deeply in, in the moments ahead. And so God, thank you for meeting us in this place. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for receiving our worship. And God, as we hear uh, more about what it means to gather around a table, God, in this time where that seems so difficult, Help us to, to find ways to continue to reach out, whether that's friends, family, coworkers. Help us to continue to invite people into, into a relationship with us and with you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Where we are this morning, we invite you to worship with us.
Good morning. Hold, hold on just a second. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The overflow of whipped cream as we sink our teeth into pumpkin pie. Mmm. Mm, that is the taste of the holiday. Ooh, that is so good. I wish you had taste vision because mm, that was good stuff, folks. Thanksgiving. It is here. It is coming. Can you believe it? It is that time of year again. And, uh, you know, I know that this year it might look a little different. Might not be exactly what we expected, but it's going to come. It's going to be here no matter what. And do you know what? In spite of the fact that it might be a little um, on the different side, uh, we think somewhere around $2.4 billion is going to be spent on Thanksgiving. People still going out buying their stuff. Um, that's according to the interwebs, of course. Um, and do you want to know, do you want to take a guess on what the average caloric intake is going to be for Thanksgiving. Anyone want to take a guess? 4,500 calories per meal. But folks, it is a good meal. And if you have that much whipped cream, it might even be more than 4,500 calories. And another thing, the average Thanksgiving meal will last about 16 minutes. I mean, it takes 14 hours to make, but we'll eat it in like 16 minutes. So I want you to extend the table, extend your time there. In fact, you know, pull out, pull out these placemats that we gave out a couple of weeks ago, or you can download them from the website. They're probably going to drop a link there in the chat area. Get that. Extend the time at the table. Have conversation. These are some fun questions to kind of get that talking going so that you can extend that meal and sit longer at the table. You know, the table where all the good stuff is going to be, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, the pies. In fact, I want you to take just a few seconds, and I want you to share with your family or maybe drop it in the chat area. Tell us what your favorite side dish is on Thanksgiving. You ready? Go. So I um, actually just had another bite of one of my favorite side dishes there. But my goodness, you're probably all hungry, right? Talking about the good stuff. I think mashed potatoes and gravy are probably my favorite. They are right up there. Um, and you know what? In this series, uh, Reclaim the Table, we've been talking about how the table is just its so important, how we need to reclaim it in our families and, you know, the tables of the past now have become the places where our homework sits and the bills sit and the craft projects sit, as opposed to where we should sit and get to know one another better. And I kind of began this series talking about how the Bible even starts uh, with eating in the Garden of Eden. I mean, very first chapter, you see it. And then the Bible actually ends with eating at a, uh, at a banquet, a wedding banquet in the book of Revelation. And then you can just see throughout the scripture, it's just filled with examples of food and, and the sharing of meals. And, and I talked about how, you know, back in the day, the average dinner uh, used to last 90 minutes. And now... <laughs> And now, today, the average meal lasts about 12 minutes. Now, Thanksgiving is going to be 16 minutes on the average, so at least it's going to be a little longer on Thursday. But, you know, we've got to change that. We, we, we need to change this area with our families and our friends. And, and so we've been, you know, as a way to do that, we've been looking at the uh, table ministry of Jesus, um, especially in Luke's Gospel, uh, I, I love Luke's gospel, uh, and Jesus just, he 
always seems to either be at a table at dinner or going to a dinner or coming from a dinner. I mean, he's always eating. The guy is always eating. And, but what Jesus did was he, he claimed that table time is a chance to, to teach and, and to nurture and maybe to redirect thought and, and to just grow in those relationships with those that he dined with. And, and so for the last few weeks, we've been looking at some of the various stories where Jesus sat at a table with folks. And today, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at another meal Je- uh, Jesus shares in Luke's gospel. And we're going to talk about Thanksgiving and, and how those two go together. And, 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 and here's the thing. All right, as, as Christ followers, we need to be marked with, with gratitude and, and thanksgiving. I mean, we kind of sang about that uh, before uh, the sermon, but, you know, that gratitude, that thanksgiving, it should show in every part of our lives. And so, you know, as Christians, we should be the most thankful people on this planet because of who Jesus is and what he's done for us and and who he calls us to be. So today we're going to read from the 22nd chapter of Luke where we find Jesus at a table and he's with his disciples. And this is the last meal that he shares with them. All right, so I'm going to read from Luke 22, starting at verse 7. It says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And so Peter, uh, I'm sorry, Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go make preparations for us to eat Passover. Well, where do you want us to prepare for it? They asked. So it's, it's time for them to celebrate the Passover. Jesus is like, hey, let's do this. I want you to go make the preparations, get all the details taken care of. And Peter and John are like, well, where do you want to do this? And so Jesus tells them, he's like, just go into town. You're going to see a guy there. He's carrying a jar of water. Tell him we're all coming over for the Passover. And I love that. I love how Jesus just finds this guy and basically invites himself and a party of 12 over to share this meal. So they go over to this guy's house to share the Passover meal one last time. And then in verse 14, it says, When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. That's, that was the posture people took back in that day. They would recline back on an elbow at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Poured out for you. Um, You know, the spirit of thanksgiving. Yes, it just, it should spill out on to our tables just like it did in that last meal with Jesus. You know, Jesus sits at this Passover table and this was when he repurposed that celebration and and he claimed that table for for something new. He claimed that table as a way to kind of redirect our thinking and to teach us, you know, why it is he came and what it was he did for us. And every single time we take communion, You know, if we do it with the spirit of thanksgiving and gratitude, it is a chance for us to reclaim the table, right? It's a chance for us to show our gratitude and our thankfulness for what Jesus did. And actually, the the proof of all of this is in the name 
of the moment. Um, many of you may have, maybe some of you grew up as a Catholic uh, in your background, um, and if so, you might have ref uh, heard this meal referred to as the Eucharist. Um, the Eucharist is the moment of taking communion together as a church, and the word Eucharist literally means give thanks. That, that's the very essence. The act of thanksgiving is at the very core of this table and this meal that Jesus shares, not only with his disciples, but with us. And, and at that table, Jesus said, do this, give thanks for this, and do it in remembrance of me. And, and the reason I think Jesus said this is because, you know, he knew. He, he knows us. He knows our minds. He knows our humanity is kind of frail and, you know, that we're quick to, to forget. And so every time we sit at this table, he says, don't forget, remember this, especially when you come to the communion table. Do it as a way to give thanks and to remember what I have done for you. I mean, thanksgiving, it should spill out from us. It's our response when we realize the grace that we've been shown. You know, I, I've shared this before, you know, that when I came back to Christ after just kind of an absence from the church for not taking my relationship with Jesus very seriously, but that time when I came back, I, I can remember for weeks after, my prayer time just literally included the words, thank you. I was so thankful for knowing that Christ not only loved me, but loved me where I was and for who I was, but loved me enough not to just leave me there, but to bring me on this journey of change. I was so grateful for that love and that grace because I, I knew that Jesus loved me. And, and think about this. You know, when, when we come to church... Um, you know, whether we worship in the sanctuaries of our church buildings or whether we're worshiping in the sanctuaries of our living rooms, we need to have the most grateful heart. And, and, and you know, we might have had a, a bad day, a bad week, we may have had a bad life, but we come to worship with thanksgiving in our hearts because of what God has done for us. And that should be the countenance on our face. I mean, we should, uh, you know, that should show in how we treat other people. You know, we should have this overflowing of thanksgiving and gratitude. And that's what Jesus was claiming at the table. And so it's our time to reclaim that as well. I mean, we should always share thanksgiving in our hearts. Oh, but do you know how hard that is? It's hard on normal times. <laughs> and, and these are not normal times. You know, I was sharing um, with a friend of mine this week. I said, you know, this, it's so interesting during this pandemic. I said, both at, same t at the same time, I have never felt so close to God. And yet so far away from God. <laughs> I mean, just the duality of that has just kind of been so unique to these last few months. And yet, you know, as Christians, the spirit of thanksgiving, it should spill onto our tables and out of our lives. We should show thanks in all areas of our lives. I mean, there really are no throwaways when it comes to this, you know, because let's be really clear. Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners, <laughs> You know, it doesn't say that, well, Jesus waited for it to be a really good day to die for us, or Jesus waited until we got our life right before he died for us. No, while we were yet sinners, Christ sacrificed his life for us. He gave to us. So thanksgiving, it has to flow out of all areas of our lives, not just the good days, but also on those days when we have those small agitations. <laughs> you know, the, the day that you get cut off on Interstate 70. 
Or, you know, when somebody leaves the grocery cart in the parking spot that you're trying to get into, or, you know, it should flow out of those days when maybe we have to quarantine just a little bit, just so we can be safe. I mean, Thanksgiving has to be present then as well. But let's go a little further. I mean, we can't stop there. I mean, Thanksgiving need not only be seen in those small agitations of life, but Thanksgiving has to seep into the worst days of our lives as well. Because in the very middle of your worst day, gratitude can, it can still come out by the power of the Holy Spirit because you have God living in you. The essence of thanksgiving can still just exude from you even on your worst day. I want to read another scripture for you. This one is a go-to for me when I'm having one of those bad days. And Thanksgiving just seems to be a little stuck. And I get reminded of Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, where it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. In other words, I hear that say, let your thanksgiving and your gratitude, let it spill from your hearts. Let it spill onto your tables. Let it be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then here's the promise. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I've shared this story before, but I think it bears repeating because it was one of the hardest days of my life. I was in a hospital room with my mom. She was dying. We knew her days were coming to an end. And so we decided to kind of just stop and honor that moment, claim it, if you will, for what it was. And I wanted to share communion with her and the family that was gathered around the bed. So I went to the nurse's station and I just said, bread, give me bread, whatever you got. And they had a piece of loaf bread. I'm like, that's fine. And they gave me one of those little bitty plastic cups of juice. It was grape juice. Took it back to the table or rather to her room, and we kind of gathered around her bed. And I just simply told the story of Jesus sitting at the table with his closest friends, and I told the story of how he claimed that table of thanksgiving and how every time we do likewise that we can remember with gratitude what Jesus did for us and what Jesus does through us. I mean, and even in that moment where life, as I knew it, was about to be changed forever, I was so grateful. I was so thankful. And not because of my circumstance, but more so because of my perspective. Because I knew who I was, and I knew whose I was, and, and I knew that this wouldn't be the last meal that I was going to get to share with my mom. I mean, grateful, even on my worst day. Our Thanksgivings are going to look very different this year. Smaller. And, you know, instead of visits, maybe we'll have FaceTime calls or Zoom calls or, or, you know, maybe the table is going to be missing some people that were there last year. And the default might be for us that we just say there's really not that much to be thankful for in 2020. And if that is how you feel, then as you sit at the table this year, I want you to reclaim it. 
you know, reclaim the gratitude and the thankfulness in your life that is not dependent on your circumstances. Rather, it is our perspective that gives us gratitude. Because regardless of what might be going on in our immediate line of sight, we can rejoice because we know that no matter what, And I mean, no matter what, we have a God who loves us and reminds us that the very worst thing that we might be going through in this present life will never be the last thing that we go through. And I am grateful for that. That is the gratitude. That is the peace that transcends all knowledge. (sighs) And this year might stink. And you know what? To be quite frankly, it does. <laughs> you know, the sheltering, the quarantining, the virus, the smaller tables, and even the fact that, you know, my mom is no longer here with me. But all of that is a circumstance of this life right here. My perspective is deeper than that. It is longer than that. My kingdom perspective reminds me that there is more. And I'm grateful for that. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the many ways that you remind us of who you are and whose we are in you. We're very thankful for the table of ministry of Jesus Christ where he came to help people have a different perspective and understanding of what it means to be called we thank you God for this time of gratitude and we pray this in the name of Jesus amen Amen. so kind of like at uh, our Thanksgiving dinner this meal that we share this morning looks a little different as well I don't know what you might have before you maybe it's a a breakfast item, a cracker of some sort. Maybe the juice that you have is orange instead of grape. But regardless of those circumstances and situations, we we come together at a table and we are reminded of how Christ did the very same thing. He sat at a table with his closest friends and his family And he shared with us something he would do for us that would change everything. He would do something for us that regardless of what we might be going through in our lives right now, our perspective can be different. And so this morning as we come together around these tables within the sanctuaries of our living rooms, our bedrooms, our empty worship spaces here. Together we have in common this table of Jesus Christ. We have in common this meal that we share together. The bread and the cup where we are reminded that thanksgiving should pour out from our hearts all days and every day. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much. You know, this morning as we go deeper in our spirituality through the giving of ourselves, you can give your offering either by texting this number or the other ways that are shown on the screen in front of you. But as we offer our gifts to God, take a look at two unique ways that Woods Chapel is caring for the community during the season of Advent. One way that Woods Chapel cares for the community is through our annual Adopt a Child and Adopt a Grandparent drive. For Adopt a Child, every year we host a drive to collect Christmas gifts for children from Cornerstones of Care, Foster Care, and Adoption Services and Laurel Hills Elementary in Raytown. For this drive, church members choose tags for the children they want to make purchases for. Individuals then return the unwrapped gifts to the church in early December to be delivered to Cornerstones of Care and Laurel Hills. Foster children receive three gifts each at an average of $25 per gift. Our church community provided so much support last year, we were able to offer an additional 80 gifts to an inner city church in the Kansas City area. Woods Chapel also offers an adopt-a-grandparent opportunity led by Mary Irons. This ministry identifies long-term care residents at Truman Lakewood Medical Center that don't have family or friends sharing gifts with them during the Christmas season. Much like the Adopt-A-Child Drive, we offer folks a way to receive some good tidings and joy during the holiday season. This year, Woods Chapel would like to take a step further and ask the people buying for the grandparents to continue to keep in contact with them through cards and letters, as well as visits once restrictions are lifted. Why just send them a gift once per year? Loneliness is a struggle, and these community members need to know that they're valued year-round. Thank you for caring for our community.
to remember I never will forget that the faithfulness of God is everlasting to everlasting so next week starts Advent a season of anticipation and preparing for the birth of Jesus and we have these devotional guides that we would like to give to you they were written by some staff folks people that call Woods Chapel home and you can download them from our website. We will have them in the entryway during the uh, opening hours of the church. And we also, the children's ministry, put together a little devotional for kids that things you can do together as a family. Both of these ways not only help you prepare for the season, but it's a great way to invite others to prepare and anticipate as we celebrate this important season in the life of our church. But as you go today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen.